Hey, welcome to the Viewmasters. <laughs> Twin Peaks, episode 9. May the giants be with you. My name is Eric. My name is Joe. Oh. Hello. Season, hello. <laughs> Season 2 premiere. Hooray. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, pick up right where we left off. Pretty much. Uh, yeah, the, the episode starts uh, minutes after the, the end of the previous episode. And Agent Cooper is dead. Yes. Uh, it's rough. Yeah. I didn't expect that to happen. I did not either. A little silence. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's not dead. Don't be stupid. No. <laughs> this yeah. show would be awful without him. Yeah. Although, this episode... Wow. Yeah, so this show is uh, is just a comedy now. Right? Uh, I guess. <laughs> this is... Okay, so this episode was directed by David Lynch himself. Right. And this is definitely... The most David Lynchian episode that has happened yet. <laughs> because multiple times, sometimes out loud, I had to ask, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah, the, the absurdity level in this episode is really dialed up. Yeah. <laughs> like, if there was an absurdity thermometer, yeah. it would have exploded. It's like a, like a uh, mercury thermometer? <laughs> yes. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and it was delightful. It was fantastic. Yeah. And I barely noticed that uh, this episode was 40 minutes longer than most. Yeah, I was I was surprised at how quickly it was going, too. Yeah. Pleasantly surprised. Yes. Because usually double-sized episodes of things are sort of a slog. Sometimes. Farscape. Farscape. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Justice League? Just, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just did unnecessary two-parters. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I want to talk about the opening scene. Yes. <laughs> Which is interminably long. <laughs> and I love it. It was incredibly great. <laughs> In a, an annoying and intense kind of way. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, and of course absurd. Of course absurd, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Agent Cooper is laying on the floor of his hotel room bleeding. Yes. And, uh, and the, the front door is open. Uh, and in walks this sort of doddering old man. Uh, with a uh, bow tie on, uh, carrying a tray with a glass of milk on it. Yes. Room service! <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, he walks in and, uh, sort of attempts to have a conversation with the, uh, clearly injured Agent Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, to let him know that, uh, his warm milk is, uh, has arrived. Yeah. And, uh, how you doing down there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he has a Cooper sign for the delivery. Which, uh, includes a gratuity. Right. Yeah. Uh, he also, uh, hangs up the phone. Uh, yeah. which on the other end is, uh, Andy, uh, letting Agent Cooper know that, uh, Leo Johnson has been shot. Right. Uh, but Andy just keeps screaming into the phone, you know, to, to Agent Cooper. Uh, and so the old man decides uh, to just hang it up. Yeah, he finds that very annoying. Yeah. And, uh, also, uh, it is very difficult for him to hang up a phone, apparently. It is, yeah. He just, it takes him several seconds to actually get the receiver back into the cradle. Yeah. Uh, now admittedly, uh, we live in a day and age of cell phones and smartphones, yeah. and, uh, I will admit maybe I would be confused about to hang up a phone nowadays. Really? No. No. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Well, you know, admittedly, this guy is probably from a time where uh, they had those wall-mounted phones That's that were true. two pieces. It was a crank. It was a crank, yeah, yeah. and you you, uh, you just pick it up, and the operator's right there. Yeah. Uh, so, give me uh, KL549 Skidoo. That's right. <laughs> 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 no, it's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah. So that guy, the the old guy, uh, just moves uh, as slowly as I've ever seen a human move. Uh, I've seen slower. <laughs> as as slowly as I've ever seen a human move, uh, while still being able to tell that they're moving. Oh, okay, that's what I would go with. Still seems slower. Okay. Well, You've apparently not been to Walmart that much. I try to avoid it if I can. It's for the best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it's it's hilarious, <laughs> and also really tense. Uh huh. Because like, is Agent Cooper gonna just bleed out and die there on the floor? <laughs> and is this old man just gonna let it happen? Yeah, he's just completely oblivious. Yeah. And makes like three returns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like on, on way. This was like, I've heard about you. And then gives him a little thumbs up and a wink. And then he leaves. <laughs> and then he comes back and does it again. And then he leaves and comes back again. Well, I know, th- so this episode is uh, a double-sized. Uh-huh. I think it could have been a regular length episode. Ah! If they had cut that old man scene. Because I think that that scene was 40 minutes long. It felt super long. <laughs> but I would not have cut a second of it. Not at all. I would have been fine if that had just been the whole episode. I was kind of hoping maybe it would be. I know, I really, I did think that the whole episode would be Agent Cooper just laying there on the floor, <laughs> bleeding in his yeah. hotel room. That would have been incredible. Yeah. I, yeah, kind of thought maybe it was heading in that direction. Yeah. Because, uh, he just kept laying there. <laughs> yeah, and, and he had a lot of visitors. Yeah. Well, two. Two is a lot when yeah. you're laying there bleeding on the floor. <laughs> it's more than you would expect to have, probably, right. without someone going for help. <laughs> uh, yeah, then he uh, gets a, a second visitor. Uh, in the form of, um, a hallucinatory giant. Yeah. Who speaks in riddles. And then steals his shit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Agent Cooper hallucinated a giant, but really it was just a homeless guy who wandered in. (laughs) And who's insane. Yeah. So yeah, the the giant offers Agent Cooper three clues. Yep. Uh, and then takes his ring. Yep. And says that he'll give it back to him once Agent Cooper uh, discovers that the giant's telling the truth. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think Agent Cooper needs the enlist the help of uh, someone who is uh, well versed in riddle speaking mystery men. Yeah. He needs a Batman. He does need a Batman. Or the Riddler. Yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> reformed Edward Nigma. <laughs> I like that storyline. Yeah, me uh, too. It was, it was fun. Yeah. But anyway. I'm, I never finished it, but I liked what I read of it. Yeah, I don't think I ever did either. Yeah. yeah. I've got all the trades, I just haven't gotten to them yet. Yeah, I, I think I have a bunch of the single issues at that time. Uh, then I don't know what happened. Did Paul didn't he just leave and the storyline never finished? Or what I happened? don't know. As I said, I don't I haven't I haven't read all of it, so yeah. I don't know how it ends. All I, all I remember is uh, at one point because uh, I read like the first issue of not Streets of Gotham, but uh, Gotham Sirens. Okay. And the Riddler showed up in there, and uh, Poison Ivy had basically uh, sort of kidnapped him and taken over his house. Hmm. Okay. Edward Nigma. Yeah. No. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I I know the secret identity of the Riddler, yeah. Eric. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Aw, don't cry. <laughs> so anyway. 
<laughs> I guess I'm doing the show by myself now. I apologize for the severe dip in quality. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the riddles. That was very David Lynch. What do you think, Eric? Yes, they were. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So, I, I'm actually, so one of the riddles is that the owls are not what they seem. Uh-huh. Which I had noticed in earlier episodes, just the weird owls. Yeah. Particularly when they're out in the woods, they always do shots of owls just sitting there being creepy. Yeah. So uh, I'm sort of I'm sort of looking forward to finding out what's going on with those. That would be nice. Uh, I, I just now remembered that, uh, yeah, there have been previous shots of, uh, owls being creepy. Yeah. Uh, but my first thought was that, uh, you know, like, uh, speedways, uh, speedway gas stations across our, uh, our town here have, uh, like fake owls, uh, sitting on top of their roofs. Uh, oh, really? There are also security cameras. Oh, I never noticed that. Yeah. And I guess they're also there to scare away other birds or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So there's security cameras, is what you're saying. Yeah, you're spoiling the spoiling the show. Maybe I don't for know. me. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else they could be. I don't know. I, don't know. I think they're supernatural spirits. They but could you be. You think they're security cameras? I'm just saying that was the first thing that popped <laughs> in my head was that uh, whenever I go get gas, I see these wooden-looking owls uh, staring down at me from uh, the roofs of uh, the gas station. All right. And that was the very first thing that I thought because I did not remember that we have seen owls before in this show. Okay. And I'm inclined to agree with you that they're probably some sort of supernatural, maybe even evil, demonic spirits. <laughs> Alright. Because birds are just awful. Birds are scary. Owls are scary. Mm-hmm. I think, anyway. Yeah. And cute. But scary and cute. Scary. Yeah. Because they, they could attack you. Yeah. They are, they are vicious predators. They are. And they can turn their heads completely around. That's fucked up. Like the exorcist. <laughs> Thus, all owls are possessed by demons. Makes perfect sense to me. There we go. It's you pea soup. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <coughs> so... Uh, yeah, so, uh... What else did you like about the episode? Oh, what didn't I like about this episode? I don't know, do you want, do you want to narrow it down that way? Um, no, Bobby. because there was not anything I didn't like about this episode. No? Yeah. Even, even Bobby Briggs? Even Bobby Briggs! Wow. Yeah. Yeah, even Bobby Briggs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even Donna acting all weird? Um... Like a 30-year-old woman? Yeah, I'm fine with all this. Okay. I'm fine with everything that happened in this episode. All right. I'm confused by it. Yes. Perhaps even a little frightened. <laughs> and uh, mostly, mostly confused. But otherwise, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Because, uh, you know, a whole day has passed, and so everybody went through some drastic changes. It's true. <laughs> in, in the 17 hours. <laughs> Since Agent Cooper is shot, everyone changes completely. Yeah. Some people age uh-huh. a few years. You know, Agent Cooper uh, was, was uh, I mean, admittedly, he had just gotten shot. Yeah. But he was looking a little worse for wear. He was. Kyle McLaughlin uh, aged considerably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, between seasons. <laughs> and so did Donna and James. Uh, who else? Uh, I thought Bobby aged. Bobby some. aged, he yeah. He grew into yeah. his head a little bit more. A little bit, yeah. Uh, and of course, Leland Palmer. Yes. Uh, the most drastic change of all. <laughs> yep. The most entertaining change, at least. Because <laughs> uh, uh, in the previous episode, he uh, murdered uh, Jacques Renault. Mm hmm. Uh, and, uh, suddenly he shows up in this episode, uh, singing and dancing and, and happy, and, uh, his hair has gone completely white. Yeah. Normal. Completely normal. Yep. <laughs> Said he woke up that day, and his hair was white. Yep. That's it. That's it. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, that happens. It's like what happened to Al Jordan. 
<laughs> oh, what if Leland Palmer was possessed by the yellow fear demon Parallax? <laughs> and and Parallax is going to make Leland Palmer try to use his powers to resurrect the sawmill. <laughs> Well, I would think that uh, he would probably just uh, try to use his powers to, uh, you know, go back in time and uh, recreate the universe so that Laura Palmer never died. That's true. That's probably even a better plan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're so smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Comics. <laughs> Uh, so anywho. Yeah, so that happens. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, he, is, he has a nice singing voice. He does. Ray yeah. Wise is, is not a bad singer. Not at all. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know how well the, uh, the the listener of the show is aware of my uh, uh, feelings about uh, musical outbursts in uh, any kind of uh, entertainment. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless it's music. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan. Yeah. Yeah. Uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't feel that way in this episode at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's weird enough. That's true. That it doesn't really, it doesn't Uh, stick out. Yeah, I guess that's kind of what it is, is that uh, everything else was throwing me off. Yeah. That uh, that just seemed relatively normal in comparison. Yeah, and, (laughs) and, you know, everyone else was looking at him like he was a total freak, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that probably helps. Except for when he shows back up to work. Oh, yeah, that's true. And he bursts in singing, and uh, Ben Horn and his brother Jerry just start dancing along with him. Yeah, hopping up on tables. Yep, just just scooting around. around on the, the floor. It is fucking bizarre. Yeah, and perfect. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah. Uh, but of course this was uh, the following day where uh, Ben Horn uh, back at home from his uh, trip to One-Eyed Jacks right. where it has been revealed that he is the owner and he made a forceful attempt to rape his own daughter yeah well well <laughs> okay so he didn't know he didn't know it was his daughter but he was still going to try to rape her was it was it rape yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, I guess, like, for the... I guess I don't know what it's like with the other the other girls there when he goes to meet them. Well, you know, uh, I'm assuming that they're all willing, yeah. since he is the owner. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, since uh, she was clearly not interested... That's true. All right, I don't know why I'm even questioning it. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But he, he didn't know. He did not know. No. Uh, he didn't know it was his daughter. He knew that it would have been rape. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so that whole situation played out. Yeah, that was awkward. Uh, I did she, not care for that. Yeah. So Audrey uh, tries to hide uh, by, by closing the curtains of the bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he uh, tries to force his way into the bed, but uh, doesn't let him. Uh, so he finally decides to leave. Yes, uh, but in, in air quotes. He, he, it's a trick. It is a trick. He goes the door. Tricksy fella. Closes it, and but he's still in the room. <laughs> Uh, but she can kind of sense that, uh, he's playing around. <laughs> she knows her dad. Yeah. <laughs> he is conniving. He is. Uh, so she grabs a mask that is conveniently on the wall and puts it on. Yeah. And so when he does burst into the bed, uh, she is, uh, concealed still. Yes. Yeah. And then he still attempts the rape. He does, yeah, he does continue to advance, and, and only when Jerry yells for him yeah, uh, does he uh, relent. Yeah. Um, I forget the reason why he uh, was called away. Was it the, the sawmill burning? Uh, or fuck, what was it? I don't remember, honestly. <laughs> eh. So many oh, things happened. Yeah, it, it must have been the sawmill burning down. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, so uh, you know, the sawmill did indeed burn down. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so so uh, Agent Cooper gets rescued by by the the cops. Yeah. And uh, gets. Are we sick. doing just straight recap today? Uh, no, I'm just <laughs> okay. yeah yeah. Uh, so you know he gets uh, taken to the hospital and uh, you know patched up and when he wakes up. Uh, we basically get the laundry list uh, exposition of uh, every cliffhanger from the last episode resolved. Yeah. In like two seconds. It's really convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Incredibly convenient. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, uh, you know, show all those things happening. Yeah. You just talk about them. Well, they had a lot of ground to cover with that old man scene. <laughs> they didn't have time. For other things. <laughs> <laughs> the the old man scene took seventy minutes of this episode. <laughs> they had to move pretty quick. That's true. <laughs> so we only had twenty minutes left to do anything else. Right. <laughs> but they were a brisk twenty minutes. They were. <laughs> Uh, I was kind of hoping the old man would show up again by I the end. I was, too. I really hope that he shows up again at some point. That would be pretty great. <laughs> uh, uh, the characters in Twin Peaks are characters. <laughs> Indeed they are. <laughs> uh, like Bobby's dad. Like Bobby's dad, yeah. Who shows up again and... That is a pretty serious heart to heart with his son. It is inexplicable. Uh, like what? <laughs> but but you know, dramatic. And, it was and, dramatic, and f- for the most part, I would say the most normal interaction he has had with his son up to this point. Yeah. Until he gets up to leave, <laughs> and it is like he is going away forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. He tells he tells Bobby about this this dream that he had where where he's so proud of his son and they embrace and yeah. it's so nice. And then he gets up and and like I thought they were gonna hug, right? But no, he just shakes his hand. Yep, says, "Have a nice life." Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what he says. Yeah, I think that is what he said. Yeah, that's spectacular. Uh, and leaves Bobby to pay for his pie. Yeah. Again, I have the theory that uh, you know uh, servicemen don't get charged at the, the diner. That's your theory, but it's that's that's your head cannon. Yeah. Maybe not said out loud. Maybe he had already paid the bill before uh, he had called Bobby over to the booth. Maybe. Sometimes you you pay and then you just sit there for a while. That's true. All yeah. right, fine. All right. I'll give it to you. I'm just saying, maybe he did not step up. I I think he's just an inconsiderate jerk. All right. And also, to be fair, I don't think we've seen anybody pay a bill uh, at the <laughs> diner. That's true. With every scene that has been set there. <laughs> Well, you know, Norma, uh, she doesn't really make people pay. Yeah. <laughs> it's more of a charity diner. Right. <laughs> Just being you know, people, uh, you know, bring by, like, supplies and vegetables that they're growing to, you know, help, uh, you know, balance out the, 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 the costs. Right. The economics. Yeah, it's really, it's a commune <laughs> yeah. type situation. Twin Peaks is a commune. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> and insufferable. <laughs> oh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the whole thing is just full of random moments mm-hmm. and just little tidbits and things that, at least not yet, aren't paying off. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the one armed man shows up again. Yeah, that's right. I almost totally forgot about him. Yeah, yeah. He he uh, walks into the police station, and and uh, says that he's there to sell uh, Harry shoes. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Albert returns. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the great Miguel Ferrer yes. uh, comes back, uh, and still just a dick. It's fantastic. Yeah. Just uh, getting on everybody's nerves. Uh, scares Andy enough to run into a plank and, uh, like a cartoon, uh, mm-hmm. get hit in the face with it. <laughs> but at the same time, revealing a major clue. Yes, very important. Yes. Important uh, 
a mishap yes. from Andy. <laughs> the amount of staggering that he did after getting hit in the face with that plank. That lasted about as long as the old man said. Yeah, I really I just wanted him to fall down. Yeah. And he never fell. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Uh, um, what else did I like? Uh, other than everything. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was all good. Yeah. Uh, maybe I didn't uh, enjoy the, uh, the origin of, uh, Ed and Nora or oh, whatever yeah. her name is. Nadine. Nadine, yeah. that's it. Yeah, we did get some exposition from him about their relationship. <laughs> yep. And how she lost her eye. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, was also not nearly as dramatic as uh, I thought it might be. Well, when he said that he he shot her eye out on their honeymoon, it was yeah. It sounds more dramatic than yeah. it actually is. Then he explains it, yeah. and it's just not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was okay, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I, like, the, the whole thing was, it was hilarious and absurd, and then we got to the last, like, two minutes of the episode, yeah. and it's the creepiest fucking thing. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, well, earlier in the episode, uh, this, uh, they, they cut to, uh, a girl lying in the hospital, mm-hmm. and I just, thought to myself, who is this? <laughs> what is happening? And then luckily they superimpose a flashback to an earlier episode and I remember that it's the other girl. Yeah, Ron uh, Pulaski. Yeah. Uh, who uh, was uh, present uh, when Laura died. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah so we see her early on Yeah. Uh, and then at the end of the episode we go back to her. Yeah. Uh, well, the, I, I skipped a part. The the giant visits Agent Cooper again. That's right. Uh, and and uh, previously they had determined that there was a third man present uh, for the shenanigans with yeah. Laura before she died, uh, and likely this third man was the killer. Right. And uh, and the giant, uh, when Agent Cooper is sleeping, uh, tells him that one person has seen the third man. Right. Again, more riddles. Yeah. yeah. Also tells him not to look for all the clues at once. Right. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a bit much. Spread that shit out. Yeah. <laughs> you got 22 episodes to fill. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, I just now recalled, uh, there was a show, The Killing. Yes. Uh, in which, uh, while, while very dissimilar to Twin Peaks, uh, starts off on the same basic premise. Mm-hmm. A girl is murdered and cops are trying to solve the murder. Yes. Uh, and, and the whole tagline of the show was who killed, uh, Rosie, whatever. Rosie her Larson. Name. Or Rosie Larson, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, uh, people were very, very upset that, uh, that murder did not get solved by the end of the first season. Yeah. Uh, you know, I wonder how people felt about Twin Peaks. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I guess because it was such a short season. Maybe. Yeah. Like I don't know if they expected it to be. If they knew it was going to be that short, and they if they still expected it to be solved by the yeah, end of yeah. the season. I don't know. I don't know. But that's interesting. But maybe it's just uh, you know there was no internet back then, and yeah. uh, we didn't hear all the assholes talking. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's interesting. I might just, look that up. Just something that occurred to me. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, so uh, Agent Cooper gets visited by the giant again. Uh, also, uh, Audrey tries to telepathically contact him. Yeah. Uh, as she is now being held prisoner at One Eye Jacks. Right. Well, she, she's trying to use the Force. Right. Yeah. Like the way that Luke contacted Leia at sure. the end of Empire Strikes Back. Uh, may the giant be with you. That's right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she did, uh, she reveals that she left the note for Agent Cooper, uh, that he found, or that had been slid under the door at the end of the previous episode. Right. And that is now lost, uh, under the bed. Yeah. Uh, since he was shot. Yeah. And he's forgotten about it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Maybe he remembers it now. Because the, the giant, before he disappears, is like, you've forgotten something. Yeah. And then, like, a little ball of light <laughs> shoots out from him yeah. into Agent Cooper's head. Yep. So maybe he remembers now. Maybe he does. <laughs> At least he remembers to look for something now. Yeah. yeah. What is happening? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so then uh, after that, uh, we, we go back to Coma Girl, uh, who just starts having a convulsion, and uh, uh, we we see basically what she is uh, seeing in her mind's eye, uh, which... Leads us to believe uh, it is uh, she is envisioning Laura's murder. Yeah, they're back in that uh, boxcar or wherever they were. Yeah. And uh, there's a uh, very creepy, long-haired dude who we have seen once or twice before uh, in, in other people's visions. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically going nuts and uh, beating the crap out of something. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Laura. Probably Laura. (laughs) That's the impression that I got. That's, yeah, I'd say that's safe to assume. So, yeah. Yeah. That was really fucked up. Yeah, it was. And now we've seen Laura's murder. Yeah. (laughs) And we know who killed her. And we know who killed her, yeah. It's uh, some long-haired, white-haired, gray-haired dude. We are a step ahead of everyone else. We are indeed. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's interesting, though. I I like that. Yeah, I like that we know, even though everyone else doesn't yet. Right, and, and it's not like we know who it is. We just yeah. have a face. That's that's true. Uh, we we don't know his name. We don't know who he is. What his connection to everything is. Uh, but but uh, hopefully we'll find out. Yeah. at some point. I I would imagine so. I would hope so. Yeah. But probably not. Probably not. Because <laughs> the show was prematurely canceled. Yeah, but it could be before the season's over. That's or true. at the end of this season. That is true. We'll see what happens. I, I guess. Yeah. We're not going to stop watching the show right now? No. Okay. No. That's good. Yeah. Well, I want to see what happens. I do, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. I got to... Uh, oh, oh, uh, 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 Alicia Witt. Oh, yeah! Very young Alicia Witt is in this episode. It is, indeed. Kind of creepy. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Because she's super hot now? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, she, uh... uh, Was she Donna's younger sister? I think so? Yeah. 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 And, uh... That that has never been seen before. That has never been seen before, right. Uh, Yeah. Redcon. Right. Yeah, because we had seen a sister, mm-hmm. uh, and she was also there at the, at the family get together. Yeah, Laura's was... memorial thing. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Leland's there in a tux. Yeah, well, it's uh, feeling good now. Well, sure, <laughs> he's happy. Yeah, come Let's on, get, get happy. Get happy. <laughs> That was the, that was the song I expected him to sing. Hello, world. There's a song that we're singing. Oh, uh, happy from the, the Partridge, Partridge family. family. Yeah. yeah, but that wasn't the song he sang. No. Anyway, they probably couldn't get the rights to that. Probably not. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, Alicia Witt uh, plays the piano. Yeah. Pretty well. Yeah. And for some reason, is dressed up as a fairy princess. Yeah, that was weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, she's a little kid. Yeah, she's like ten or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. just let her wear whatever she wants if sure. she's quiet. Yeah, uh, yeah. When 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 she showed up, uh, I had to confirm on IMDb that it was indeed her, mm-hmm. and saw that she was in Dune as well. Yeah. Uh, so so apparently had previously worked with David Lynch. She's David I Lynch guess favorite. Yeah. Yeah. For two things. Just just like Dennis Hopper and Laura Dern. Kyle McLaughlin. <laughs> She's right up there. Yes. <laughs> it actually, it goes, it goes Kyle McLaughlin, uh-huh. uh, Alicia Witt, yeah. <laughs> Laura Dern, yeah. Dennis Hopper. Yeah. And, uh, ooh, uh, where would, uh, where would Harry Dean Staten fall into that? Um, he's in a separate list entirely. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah. Yeah. That, right. was, that was it. Yep. Yeah. So uh, we'll be back next week with the uh, second episode of the second season. Yeah, hopefully we learn more about the uh, long-haired hippie murderer freak. I hope so. I mean, you know. What our man. My, my opinion is that all long-haired hippie freaks are murderers. I know. So, you know, there's no surprise there that uh, 
that's what happened more. But what if he was possessed by a demon? Mm, still not surprised. Okay. Because, of course, a demon would possess a long-haired hippie freak. True. Because <laughs> they are the most acceptable to murder. How cliche, demon. <laughs> Pick a new target. Owls and yeah. long-haired dirty hippies. <laughs> So what we really have here is a battle between the Lords of Order and the Lords of Chaos. <laughs> yeah. The Lords of Order are represented by the giant, who is Lurch from the Addams Family movies. <laughs> and the, the uh, Lords of Chaos are owls yeah. and long-haired hippie freaks. Yep. I like it. Yeah. Uh, when does Constantine show up? <laughs> Uh, this fall on NBC. Excellent. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I am not. Aw. It could be not bad. It's David Goyer. Yeah. It could be not bad. It's David Goyer and the guy who created The Mentalist. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing going right it with that. It could be not bad. <laughs> there is nothing going right from the jump. <laughs> And then, of course, there's all the uh, people who are upset that Keanu is not uh, uh, reprising his role. <laughs> Those people can go die. <laughs> I know that may seem like an extreme opinion, uh, but it's not. It is the correct opinion. It, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be back next week. All right, then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to The Viewmasters. You can subscribe to the show directly at view.guttertrash.net or at iTunes and leave us a review. Visit view.guttertrash.net for email information and links to Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time on The Viewmasters. Masters.